This week on the Tiger Lacrosse Report, we'll discuss the Tigers' matchup against another Baltimore rival and top-ranked team, Loyola. Later, we'll take a look ahead to the Tigers' next game against Georgetown. Stick around, fans. The Tiger Lacrosse Report, brought to you by Northwestern Mutual, begins now. Tiger fans and welcome to the Towson Sports Network studio for another edition of the Tiger Lacrosse Report presented by Northwestern Mutual. I'm your host Spiro Marikas. After opening the season with a win against Johns Hopkins, the Tigers took on eighth-ranked Loyola here at United Stadium. Unfortunately, the Tigers were on the losing end of a shootout 15 to 11. In the first half, the Tigers started slow as the Greyhounds scored the first four goals of the game. Towson managed to close the gap at three with a halftime score of 9-6. And with all the details of that first half, here is the former All-American head coach of the Tigers, Sean Nadlin. And coach, first thing I want to ask, because it seemed like during the game, whoever was shooting to the end nearest Shepard Pratt had an advantage because the ball was coming out of a snowbank on the uh, west side of the field. Was, was that true or is it just an anomaly that most of the goals were scored on that end? Can't really tell one way or the other. Uh, there was definitely, a, you know, that that white background uh, being on the hill that doesn't get a lot of sun. So the ball, you know, I know Justin Mavis got jammed up, didn't see a ball that was fed to him by Spencer Parks uh, at that end of the field in our man, one of our man ups. Uh, it was definitely tough to track, you know, and that was really kind of the only only spot, you know, any passes coming from kind of the top of the box down at that point or any shots in that way. I know. Our players had talked about how it was difficult to see, but you know, obviously they had to play in it for two quarters as well. Um, you know, it's, I don't know, it just happened the way it did. All right, the, the game starts with Loyola scoring the first four goals, and I know Hunter and I were in the booth, and we were like, "Oh man, this can't be like last year." But you guys did fight back and, and cut it to nine to six at halftime. What was it about the beginning of that game that allowed Loyola to jump out to that lead? It was frustrating, you know, and then when they got that first goal. Um, you know that quickly on their first shot. You know that, that's the first thing I know that jumped into my mind and maybe it creeped into some of our players, uh, which led to maybe you know those consecutive goals after. You know, it, it's difficult when you have that first face-off um, go your way, you, you earn possession, and then the first pass um, dribbles over the midline. They get it, come down quick, and, and score a goal, and then they get the next possession and score a goal and man up. Um, you know we we definitely created our own issues um, in in. A team like Loyola, who's a very tough team, uh, you know, uh, a nationally ranked top 10 team, they're going to capitalize on those. And that was something we didn't want to do. We couldn't get out of our own way in those first, you know, five minutes and, and pretty much throughout the game a lot of times and just allowed Loyola to, to gain those advantages and cr create on their opportunities, uh, which they did. They shot the ball very well, you know, shot at a high percentage. Um, we didn't help ourselves by defending as well as we could have. A lot of mistakes out there on the defensive end. So the Tigers fell behind 9-6. to six. Let's take a look at the first half highlights and how that 9-6 score came about. And now the Tigers with a bad pass that rolls back over to the Loyola side and the Greyhounds come up with it as Nico Pontrello has it. Feet ahead, shot and a score for Loyola quickly. Tyler Albrecht got the pass from Pontrello on the right side and stuck it home to Sherlock. Sherlock comes down the left about eight yards from the crease. Fires a shot right through the legs of Tyler White and it's 2-0 Loyola as Sherlock gets the goal. Fourth feed down the left side. Cross field pass, wide shot and a score by Zach Haywires. 4-0 Loyola with 9.29 to go here in the first quarter. Back over on the right to Hodgson. Hodgson fakes flipping it. Pass over to the left side, wide shot, score Tigers, Joe Sider. Gets the goal, his third of the season, and the Tigers are on the board. Four to one with 6.43 to go here in the first quarter. About 30 seconds left on the penalty. Shot and a score. This time from the left side, Nico Pontrello sticks it just past the left elbow of Tyler White, and it's five to one Greyhounds. Parks trying to move in. He gets double teamed. Turns, feeds in front, turn, shot, score, Joe Sider. So he's got both Tiger goals 
on a beautiful feed from Spencer Parks. Haywires turns, shoots, top shelf and scores on a beautiful shot there with four seconds left in the quarter, six to two Loyola. Ryan Fournier may have gotten part of Hodgson's stick coming up the right. Turning, shooting and scoring is Spencer Parks. So the transfer from North Carolina has a goal and two assists as Towson has cut it to six to three with 12-13 to go here in the first half. It's about eight yards from the crease. Moves towards the middle of the field. And off his knees, fires a shot and scores. An off balance, tremendous shot by Andrew Hodgson. And it's six to four, Towson has cut it to two. And his face off, ball's just sitting there. Conroy kicks it over the Tiger side, scoops it up, feeds to his left. Shot, score, Joe Sider. Seven to five. Get it into his offense and get, the, get everybody set up and run a play here with the last uh, under two minutes here. Parks, turn, shoot, scores. Right over the head of McInerney, top shelf, eight to six. Tigers down two, Spencer with his second goal of the ball game. Savio, and this time Loyola wins, fast break, shot, score, Greyhounds. Tyler Albrecht gets the goal. So the Tigers trailed 9-6 at halftime. What did you tell the team in the locker room? Well, I, actually, I don't think you went into the locker room, but what did you tell the team at halftime? We did go to the locker room at halftime. Um, you know, it was it was tough because, and I told them kind of what we talked about. It's just we got to we got to stop shooting ourselves in the foot. You know, we had opportunities. We had, you know, we had one possession through faceoffs or, or defensive stops at times, um, offensive end. You know, we had opportunities and you know didn't shoot the ball overly great, even though their goalie wasn't playing well. Um, we just you know we need to settle down a little bit. Maybe uh, I don't know if we were too nervous, not you know emotionally or mentally ready for for the start of that game, but. You know, being that we had a, you know, only a three-goal deficit there, you know, we're in decent shape after starting in a four-goal hole. You know, we just need to keep, you know, working at it and, and getting back on track. Pat Conroy again came in, did a great job at the uh, face-off dot after Alec Berkeley got off to a slow start. This kid's amazing, isn't he? he, he Pat's just, he is, you know, and I, I like to use the word, you know, warrior for him because he is, you know, you, you put him out there. In any situation, he's going to try to make it go in his advantage and, and for the team. Um, you know, it's, it's a good good thing to have. Alec is still a, a very capable faceoff guy, and we have a couple other guys that are there. Um, two procedures early, you know, in the game, we ended up having eight overall. You know, that puts us in a hole, so we have to take more of a defensive approach. Pat allows us to, to do that, um, but we, we need to be much more efficient at the faceoff X, you know, with regards to the procedures and, and putting ourselves in, in those situations. We have come to our first break. When we come back, we'll discuss the exciting second half of the Tigers game against Loyola. The Tiger Lacrosse Report with head coach Sean Nadlin returns right after these words. With communication comes trust. At Northwestern Mutual, we start by getting to know you. Then together, build a financial plan that takes advantage of life's opportunities. This is where the legends live. Waiting for someone with better innovation. From the brand that reinvented the t-shirt comes the Under Armour Speed Form Apollo. This is our rocket ship. You'll find it on the sidewalks of Little Italy and on the porches in Catonsville. You can see it when friends meet in Mount Vernon. It's pride, pride in our city, Pride in our people. That's why MedStar Health is building the most accessible healthcare system in the region to look after everyone from Lutherville to Locust Point. So no matter where you go, no matter who you are, you're never far from MedStar. Brian Vickers, Aaron's sponsored driver. He doesn't just love racing, he lives it. He got the paper! Woo! His pit crew follows him everywhere. 
Oddly, so does his boss. Right, right, sign that, sign that. <laughs> yeah. And his passion for racing is rivaled only by his passion for errands. No credit needed. I'll take it. Congrats. Errands makes owning easy through lease ownership, so you can own the life you want. Welcome back to the Tiger Lacrosse Report, brought to you by Northwestern Mutual. I'm Spiro Maricas. Coming into the second half against Loyola, the Greyhounds scored the first three goals before the Tigers answered with two straight of their own. Unfortunately, Loyola went on a late run that Towson could not overcome, despite the Tigers scoring the last three goals of the game. Joe Sider led the Tigers with four goals, and Spencer Parks added three of his own and had four assists. Before we continue, let's take a look at the second half highlights from the game against Loyola. Sherlock moving towards the middle of the field, 15 yards from the crease. He comes down, he bounces one right past Tyler White, 10 to 6 Greyhounds. And Trey Pugh will bounce one and score. 11 to 6. And that's one Tyler White, I think, wishes he had another chance at. Up top of Parks, over to Cuccinello. Back to Parks, left cider, shoots and scores. His fourth goal of the ball game, and the Tigers have cut it to 12 to 7. Trenner is back, he's got it for the Tigers. Four minutes to go, third quarter. Towson down five. Trenner comes up the left, feeds it out front. Wide shot score. Andrew Hodgson is second, and the Tigers have cut it to 12 8. Montrello moving up the right side. Has a long stick on him. Turns, shoots, and scores. 13 8. Loyola with a minute 31 to go here in the third quarter. Greyhounds beat it in the middle. Behind the back shot and a score by Tyler Albrecht off the pass from Pontrello, and it's 14-8 Loyola. That matches their biggest lead of the game. Of uh, the goaltender, Lamone, who makes the save, passes it ahead. Here comes Loyola on the run. Feed to the right. Haywire shoots. Haywire scores. 15-8 with 7.48 to go in the game. Hodgson works the line, Cage to Parks, Parks turns, spins, shoots, and scores. So Spencer Parks with the hat trick. And uh, he's actually got a double hat trick, three goals and three assists. Mavis feeds out front to Sider, top of the box. Work it down low, shot, score, Towson. And that's Ryan Drenner with his first goal of the game. Ball rolling loose and coming away with it is Towson. Sider feeds it back to Conroy, who shoots and scores with 17 seconds left in the game. And it's 15 to 11. All right, Coach, we've seen the highlights against Loyola, and I'm sure the one thing that probably disappointed you the most is that the Greyhounds did come out, and they started the second half the same way they started the first half. Yeah, you, you always want to start, you know, every quarter. You know, you, you want to close out and start every quarter, you know, with the ball in your end, opportunities to score, opportunities to, you know, really start out well or... or you know, capitalize at the end of a quarter. Uh, we didn't do that. Um, you kind of obviously fell behind early again in the, in the second quarter, already having a three-goal deficit. You know, it's tough to ask our, you know, our team to really be able to dig in and come back from that. But, you know, our guys did that. They, they stayed, you know, stayed poised. They stayed, you know, with, with passion out there and, and competed to, to get those. But uh, I was disappointed for our players because, you know, we had moments where we were really playing well. We just couldn't string it together enough to, to be able to overcome the deficit and get it to where we needed to be. Um, every time it seemed like we got one, two goals, you know, we'd make a, you know, a mistake, a boneheaded play, and, and they'd get a goal. And you know, just simple errors, simple mental mistakes, just breakdowns, you know, either with stick work or communication, you know, allows a, a team like Loyola to capitalize, and, and they did that very well. Um, you know, we have to understand that, you know, playing. The schedule that we do, you know, we, we can't have games like that and think that we're going to come out with a win, you know. So we got to really sharpen up our game, you know, get get more focused and be able to execute at a much higher rate, you know, in order to, to win. One guy who did sharpen up his game was Spencer Parks. He was scoreless, pointless in the first game against Hopkins, but then coming up with three goals and four assists, that's got to do nothing but bode well for your attack because that's going to open up the other guys to be able to do things. You hope so. You know, Spencer, I know, had opportunities in, in the Hopkins game that he'd like to have back. Uh, definitely a couple of close ones. He capitalized that here uh, against Loyola, which was great. You know, it was great to see him get those opportunities, you know, capitalize on him. He had a couple more that, you know, he definitely could have banked in the goal as well. I know, um, 
you know, I think any shooter wants to score in every shot that they have. Um, but the good thing for Spencer is he got those. He, you know, opened up some um, some other guys with some skip passes and opportunities for them to score. They capitalize. So, you know, the more people we can get in the mix offensively that can you know, produce is a, is a great thing. You know, our midfield needs to step up their game a little bit more, um, especially with those senior uh, leaders that we have, and, and be more productive. You know, might not need to be on the point side, but just being able to um, be more effective. Coming on the other side of this break, we'll look ahead to the Tigers' next game against Georgetown. We'll be back with the Tiger Lacrosse Report right after these words. Brian Vickers, Aaron's sponsored driver. He doesn't just love racing, he lives it. He got the paper! Woo! His pit crew follows him everywhere. Oddly, so does his boss. Right, right, sign that, sign that. <laughs> yeah! And his passion for racing is rivaled only by his passion for Aaron's. No credit needed, I'll take it. Congrats. Aaron's makes owning easy through lease ownership, so you can own the life you want. You'll find it on the sidewalks of Little Italy and on the porches in Catonsville. You can see it when friends meet in Mount Vernon. It's pride, pride in our city, pride in our people. That's why MedStar Health is building the most accessible healthcare system in the region to look after everyone from Lutherville to Locust Point. So no matter where you go, no matter who you are, you're never far from MedStar. With communication comes trust. At Northwestern Mutual, we start by getting to know you, then together build a financial plan that takes advantage of life's opportunities. that person who's good with money. See what's free to spend, move money with a slide, save with a shake. Feel good about your decisions. Welcome back to the Tiger Lacrosse Report brought to you by Northwestern Mutual. I'm Spiro Marikas. The Tigers head to Washington, D.C. this Saturday to take on the Hoyas of Georgetown at noon. Last season, the Tigers defeated the Hoyas in United Stadium 8-7. The Hoyos will be looking to defend their home opener after losing their season, opening their season with a loss on the road to Notre Dame, 14 to 12. Now, Coach, last year you were coming off that loss to Loyola, and I think the the Georgetown win really sparked you guys. You guys went on a winning streak after beating the Hoyos. That was a huge win for your program last year. It was, you know, after getting we lost to Hopkins in the first game, um, second game of the season, got absolutely beaten down by Loyola midweek. Um, you know, we were looking for our guys to, to step up and really answer, you know, as a, as a team, what they were really going to be about on, on game day. And having a tough uh, Georgetown team come to Towson and for us to showcase that against a talented group, um, I think gave us a lot of confidence, you know, showed us really what we need to do in, in games to compete to win. Um, and that helped us. And, you know, this year, you know, we're in a similar situation coming off a loss and, and a, a much different Georgetown team that, um, They've had last year a uh, much more complete team. Um, yeah, athletically, they're um, a little bit younger on the offensive side, but they got some nice athletes, great skill sets, a uh, team that you know is very capable and something that we have to be very mindful of. Yeah, I mean, they, they lose to Notre Dame by two. Notre Dame is a team that many people are touting as a possible national championship team, so obviously they played toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Irish. They did, and, and watching the films, um, you know, that it showed us how, how much improved Georgetown is. Um, they have a, a freshman starting for him at attack who's, you know, a dynamic, um, dynamic player with his speed and versatility. And they got some good guys over the midfield that are really some of the, the, the better athletes we'll probably see at the midfield um, throughout the season. So we're going to be battle tested on the defensive end. Um, they have always a strong defense with Coach Warren and, and really um, anchoring those guys down. They have a great freshman goalie who's uh, he's a good sized lefty who, who stopped a lot of Notre Dame shots and um, you know really put them in position to, to have an opportunity to win. You know they've been battle tested. You know went out there. You know took Notre Dame down to the wire. They're going to be looking to start up their home slate. You know obviously uh, against us with a win. 
and our guys got to be in the right mindset, understanding that they're a different team, um, but understand that we can be uh, a better team than what we showcased on Wednesday and being able to have an opportunity to be tested and, and hopefully work hard to come away with that win and earn that win is what we're going to look for on Saturday. This is a, a good game because it is a, a team that, no, they're not a Baltimore team, but they're the closest thing to that. And I, I don't think Towson had played Georgetown since the, the NCAA playoffs in the mid-2005. Mm -hmm. um, how did this come about? Is this something you want to continue down the road? Uh, the, yeah, I think Coach Warren and I, uh, the head coach, we've talked about continue it down the road. Uh, it does make some sense, you know, with proximity and, and having another somewhat local team on each other's, um, you know, schedule helps. They're, you know, they're in the Big East, so they have to travel a little bit more than we do in the CAA. Um, but it came about by he and I just having a conversation a couple of years ago, you know, making it work within the schedules and then, you know, finding time to, to put it in there. So, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll talk as, um, you know, probably towards the end of the year, see if we want to keep it going. But it's something that, you know, is, I think, good for both programs at this part. Yeah, you, you, you like to play all those schools at the bottom of the RPI list, right? Yeah, exactly. Hopkins, Loyola, Georgetown. Yeah. You know, we and you are in charge of the schedule, correct? Except for the CAA, yeah. <laughs> I get the out-of-conference games. It, that, that's got to be important for both teams, too, because you, you want to play schools that can help you, that if you don't win your conference tournament, you've got some quality wins that could still get you into the NCAAs. Absolutely. I think anybody, you know, any school or any program that really, you know, wants to give themselves a legitimate opportunity uh, to get the NCAA tournament, which, you know, Towson is one of those and we expect to be there, um, you have to allow your schedule to, to help you get to that, whether it be through the conference and you got to take care of business there or, you know, strengthening your schedule out of conference. And we're fortunate that within our, our local area, we have some high quality opponents that help us with RPI, strength of schedule, all those things. And, you know, being able to earn those wins and, and compete against those teams, um, you know, even if we don't earn those wins, it still prepares our team, you know, for conference play and gives us, you know, the opportunity to, to kind of continue to get better but you know when you do earn those wins it, it just allows you to get those quality points in, in you know in your back pocket that you know whatever happens in the conference tournament you know you still have a good strength of schedule a lot of conference that hopefully sets you up for you know in that large bid even though those are you know smaller to come by in, in the uh, overall scheme of things yeah they certainly are as time goes on they are really getting tough to come by um, one change that you made during the Loyola game Tyler White, was it just not his day? Is that all it was? It didn't look like it, um, you know, and, and we didn't help him defensively. There's no doubt about that. You know, a few of the, few of the early goals weren't from, you know, weren't from 15 or 16 yards out. You know, they were right on the doorstep. So it was tough. Um, you know, it was kind of both sides. I didn't think he was reacting well to the shots, and uh, we weren't helping him as well as we should have. Um, Matt Hoy, you know, jumped in and, and did a, you know, I thought a, a really good job, a really strong job. You know, Tyler's a guy that, you know, we've depended on and going to continue to depend on. Um, you know, he, he we, we talked this morning and, and his mindset was back on page and knows that, you know, he's got to be better for uh, his team. So he's going to, you know, hopefully show that on Saturday. We have to take one final break, but we'll be back with more of the Tiger Lacrosse Report right after this. This is where the legends live, waiting for someone with better innovation. From the brand that reinvented the t-shirt comes the Under Armour Speed Form Apollo. This is our rocket ship. Virtual Wallet can help you be that person who's good with money. See what's free to spend, move money with a slide, save with a shake. Feel good about your decisions. Yeah, we're on vacation next month. My family turns through all sorts of data. Well, now we have MobileShare value plans with rollover data, so the data you don't use this month rolls over to the next. Sounds great, but what's your angle? I don't think I have any angles. Hardball, huh? Look, if you want me in on this, I want a piece of the action. Oh, well, you get the rollover data automatically, so you're already in on the action. Deal. You should negotiate more stuff. You're pretty good at it. Now get three lines for $120 a month with rollover data to share.
With communication comes trust. At Northwestern Mutual, we start by getting to know you, then together build a financial plan that takes advantage of life's opportunities. Welcome back to the Tiger Lacrosse Report. Coach, thanks for joining us, and good luck against Georgetown on Saturday. Thanks, Bureau. As we have mentioned, the Tigers will be heading to D.C. to take on the Hoyas at the multi-sport field. Game time is noon. If you can't make it to the game, you can follow all the action on TowsonTigers.com starting at 11.45 with the pregame show hosted this week by Kevin Cobb. Thanks for watching another episode of the Tiger Lacrosse Report presented by Northwestern Mutual and Go Tigers.